Supposed to be for temporary period, Tem period not yes. for good, not, not for, for good. health, and well, for welfare, welfare, like welfare, welfare reasons. Like for example, if a, if, a, if a student is not able to, you know, go ahead with the school activities, like learning processes, maybe having some difficulties, health challenge, just go home for six months, one year, just go rest, take care of yourself, and then when you come back, you continue from where you stop. But obviously, it has changed over time. And so now we want to understand this rustication as a concept, the way it's operated right now in Nigeria. What should be done about it? And of course, why such punitive measure? And is there any solution or is there any alternative? So, Ma, let's start. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here this morning. I think you tell me. So, actually, like uh, the habit of justification is, uh, is the last punishment given to a lana. So if you grade the punishment given to lana, we have suspension, we have uh, detention. The first of all, the first was detention. We have manual level. We also, because uh, in terms of detention, it should be more than 30 minutes for minor offenses. And also, you, have, you know that the offenses in school that are graded, there are some serious ones, there are some other ones that are some more serious ones. And the most serious one that you can hear something like this. And one of the particular, the most serious one that you can hear something like this is where the classification is where is, uh, the student has academic challenges, maybe academic weakness or weaknesses. Probably in the course of your admission, you know, it's wrong, the process is very wrong, you assume that you cannot go, you didn't pass jump, you can't even pass your SS, SSC or whatever, or WAEC, any means of entering the university, you didn't do well. And academically, you have entered the university, you are not, even if you enter with good results, but you are not performing well. So at that point, it's, it comes necessary to ask you to go on. I'm going up temporarily for you to do something about yourself. It's for you to either go and upgrade or read or go for something that suits you. So that is the only place where it could be allowed as a punitive measure for those who didn't do well or who didn't come through the right process. But making it a final thing for someone that is sick or somebody that has other offenses is not the right thing to do. You accept on occasion whether maybe the student committed murder or you are selling narcotics in this institution or whatever, you know, other, uh, other offenses that are highly graded. Those are the places you can call in this uh, term. All right, uh, recently we had a 
the university of the new uh, university kids, five students, and uh, just many a week later uh, they were recalled uh, because they protested the increase of school fees. Look at the fact that in Nigeria most times it is either in terms of uh, the facilities not being up to speed or there's an increase in uh, school fees, that's the way students do this. And uh, the next thing we see is rustication. And the student being blamed for the failure of the education sector. And is that right? I think there's an abuse of rustication uh, these days, yes, because um, academically, you know, there's something we call fundamental human rights. And this fundamental human rights does not end as an individual that is not in school. So the moment you are born as a child in a country, that fundamental, that fundamental human right is, is automatic. You don't do anything to earn it. You understand? Okay. So that it goes out your right to your life, expression of uh, your interests or whatever, uh, freedom of association, uh, freedom to private life or family life, you know, a, a freedom of choice. So all those fundamental human rights are there and the expression. So if you say you are not, uh, you don't like what is happening in the system, you are free to speak, even to join a group or associate with any group. So far, the group is not uh, going to do, engage in any activity that is going to be harmful to others. That is where there will be a problem. Otherwise, we are not restricted from doing anything that, as a human being, something that is good. Okay. So now, if a student acted on upon the idea of fundamental human rights, which is freedom of expression. This punishment is too much, and that is why it's been abused. All right, uh, as an education consultant, uh, what are the key issues uh, school, uh, the VC or the vice chancellor or the provost, depending on which uh, tertiary institution we're looking at, what are the basic things considered before these actions are taken? We know that normally you're supposed to go before the Senate panel uh, in the school to hear your case. Uh, how sincere or how effective has this process been before schools, you know, arrive at decisions? Well, some of these uh, issues I blame the system because um, the Nigerian curriculum excluded the most important force for education, that is the local aspect of education. Okay. It's a call that every teacher, irrespective of the class, whether lecturer in the university, a teacher at a primary school or a secondary school level, they are supposed to go through this course, or they are supposed to pass this course called Labor Aspect of Education. I believe that it's only this course that can expose their mind to certain things they need to do on how, or, or the law governing the education system, on how they should operate. Because everything that operates in this life has a law that declares its operation. Same thing goes for education. So, you have education law. And the education law, anything that you are doing within the education system and is outside the education law, you are your own. Unfortunately, many people that are in the industry, I mean, the, the so called stakeholders, state state okay. yes, they are not well grounded in this, in the labor aspect of education. And that is why our system is falling today because you don't know what you do tomorrow, what you might do, and you will see it as something that is good. It will end up constituting a, a problem and they end up in litigation where they might be trapped. But if they are exposed to this uh, course called legal aspect of education, that is going to help them. Some of these things, they will know the extent they will go and they, and they will know their limits. Okay. Um, my let's, let me take you back a bit. In 2016, a student in Vietnam was prosecuted due to a post that he made on Facebook pertaining to the things happening in the school uh, administration. Now, my question is, is a student going to be judged by what he posts on his public, uh, on social media accounts? Because when it happened, some people were saying, why didn't you post something like that as anonymous if you know that he was going to get you this? So. Is it students supposed to be judged? Because this is the age of social media. We all are on social media. And these days, we, we don't have the opportunity to go to uh, maybe the, the head to tell them one or two things. But we can go to our social media account 
to run on two things that we feel is bothering us because we feel that the authorities can be able to get it from there. Now, so is a student supposed to be judged by his public profile or by his post on social media? You see, it's an encroachment or an infringement on the right of the student or being uh, punished for expressing the views over something. Like I earlier said, it boils down to this level aspect of education. If a lecturer rather have knowledge of level aspect of education, they will know that uh, when, they will know when a student is being uh, that, that is uh, a kind of enjoying the fundamental human right, and that is freedom of expression. And uh, except it's harmful, maybe maybe it's derogatory or something like that, or maybe defamative. Then you cannot say, oh, what if somebody says, but even if it is. Is there any condition that can warrant such a thing? You understand? And there, is process, there are processes of punishment, additional and kind of punishment, including corporal punishment in education. So before you administer any punishment, you have to know the principles regarding the administration of that particular punishment. For example, I've had cases whereby uh, maybe a child is making noise in the class and you end up by detaining the child for more than 30 minutes. The parents have the right to you know, see for legal redress on that issue. Yeah. Okay. If it's more than 30 minutes. Or you, we have had a case whereby, because of minor offenses, you beat a child to death. Okay. So you cannot say, because of those, or you wake up tomorrow, somebody that registered, like, duly registered, finish your day, because of one minor offense, say you're not right to a leg. Is it like that? You understand? So, except the processes is this. If you want to suspend somebody if it's a public, a public institution, mm-hmm. you understand, public or schools, you want to suspend somebody, the Ministry of Education must be aware of it. It is the Ministry of Education that will give directive, official directive, because it's a corporate body. So are you saying for tertiary institutions, the same thing applies? It's so the, the, the problem we have here is this, that you are supposed to have rules and regulations, and these rules and regulations are supposed to be drawn from the from the ages, from the ed- uh, Ministry of Education, do some regulation that they have for schools. You use it to interpret it in your own way. For instance, they say, oh, Ministry of Education say, uh, to the, maybe they will, they will put it in a form that you will break it down in your own way of understanding. And you register it and let them know that this is how you interpret this thing in your school. Most of the schools will go today. You cannot see their rules and regulations. Even the Ministry of Education is not even interp- being interpreted in their schools. Because you are supposed to pick that one and interpret it in your own language for your own school, for your own people to understand. So that when they come, that is the first handbook you give to them. That this environment you are not, this is what you are supposed to do. This is what you are supposed to know. And you know the punishment that is attached to any act of, you know, going um, against any of those uh, stated rules. Before you punish a child, you must tell the child what the person did. If you are the child, and you must give the child a chance of to defend himself. That right, that uh, right of fair hearing in place, even if before you have up proper punishment, you must always tell the child this is what you did and let the child explain. Give them the chance. So you cannot just bundle somebody and say, oh, this is what you did and then you start administrative punishment. It's not done. So when you get to the level of execution, you know that it's, uh, it's, it's almost the highest level of it. You understand? There should be fair hearing. There should be defense. The, 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 the learner should be given a chance to call witnesses for cross examination, even you, because you, if you are the one that is, if you are the teacher that is accusing or the institution that is accusing, you will not be the same person to judge that learner. Okay. There should be somebody else. That is why in schools, they, they delegate somebody that are Mr. Copra. I know why I'm using Copra Punishment because it's the most common thing we see with flaw, isn't it? So now there must be someone that will administer it, and this person will be an arbitrary body. It must not be the same teacher that is being offended that is supposed to administer proper punishment. If you say a student is offended you and you are that, it's wrong. All right, let's look at uh, the recent high rate of uh, classification. So, I'll check on the technique. Uh, just in 2018, we had 18 students justified, 62 other students also. Uh, uh, we had a uni lag, 11 students also sent parking and uh, one other university where we had five other students also investigated. Looking at the high rate of investigation, uh, let's see, looking at just 2018, can we say the schools, the tertiary institutions are becoming very lazy in building the character 
of uh, the citizens. That's why they, it's easier, quicker for them to say, let him prosecute it. Instead of trying to mold the citizens into better people, which the school, that is one of the mandates of the school. And they have uh, not really tried to find out the causes of indiscipline in schools. Because everything has a reason, everything has a cause. You understand? Okay. So it's only when you know the cause of a particular problem that you can solve it. No, but with your work of experience, so what, what, are, what are the likely. What I'm trying to say is, is this there are so many causes of indiscipline in school. And those causes of indiscipline, before school administration or whatever want to unleash any punishment on anybody, you must sit down and they look at look in in ways and okay. discover if any of these things are playing role in the life of this land. And I look a way out. Because most of the times it's not just uh when we wake up, we just give punishment. Because what we're talking about here is about student control and discipline. And the punishment given to them, or how they end the punishment, or sometimes when their their rights are being infringed upon by by any uh, teacher or whoever in the school environment, and how such things can be treated. I think that is something of what I'm trying to treat here. So what I'm trying to say is that there are causes of indiscipline. You look in well and discover that if what this person is doing, what is the cause of it? Is it from the education system? Is it from the curriculum? Is it from the lecturers? Is it that they are not teaching well? Is it that the curriculum is so individualized that uh, it cannot fit in? Is it, uh, is it that the child is, or the learner is having a personal problem? Or is it the community problem? Is it the common problem? Where, what, where does this, where, where, where can we place the cause of this uh, act or act of indiscipline? So it's when you discover that, you now look at if it's a personal thing, have you tried on your own? Because this is the last measure, like I told you. There are so many measures you can use to correct a learner or a student that is uh, erring. So when you pick a student that is L or whatever, you study the person. When you discover any of these things that are causing discipline, you now to you now try on your own to see if there's anything you can do outside, you know, the, the highest order of a punishment. Okay. That is what you call Restication. Outside that, are there things you could do? Because before you get to this place, at this point, many people will be involved. Many years will be involved. You will hear comments. A lot of people, a lot of people will be interested in it. Even the person that is concerned have his own reasons and have his own views about the voting. So it's not a thing that somebody can wake up and say, "I'm going to do this." The question is, what have you done to find out why this thing is happening? Is there a role you are playing? Can this learner wake up tomorrow and say, "This institution, you are not doing so. What you are supposed to do for me? What I paid for?" And I also go and see for legal redress. Okay, Mark, I want to find out, during the process of rustication, do they involve parents? I'm asking this because uh, some time ago, uh, a friend of mine was rusticated, or rather, her friend was rusticated in her school. And she gave, the way she gave the scenario, she said that during the rustication period, or when they were studying this particular young man, his parents were not aware. They kept sending school fees, thinking the young man was still in school. So the letter of rustication, he kept it to himself. So if, if according to what you said, they follow due processes, it gets to the point of rustication, you have to follow uh, minute by the board. Now, are the parents yes. also involved? Yes, they are largely involved. Father, because we are sending that learner back to back home. Rustication means set home. Now, like, that is the same for me, it's sent home. And all the things are, are all the things so, waiting. We are sending somebody where we need to notify the persons that are going to send the, that person to. You need to let them know before you even publish it on paper that you have sent this person. So, there are ways you can let them know. If you write the letter and you get to them, you can publish it where you think that people who know them will inform them that this is what is going on. Okay, so I, I was thinking there would be a panel where the parents, the so, authorities, what they are supposed together. to do. Is to write a letter stating what that person did and what the, the punitive measure that is assigned to it. Because in the rules and regulations, all these things are supposed to be stated. Okay. If they are stated and you know the offense you have committed, and this is the likely thing that is going to attract, the issue there is that did this person actually did this? You understand? Because the person is still innocent. Even if you have seen him in the act, you have to, you have to give him the chance to defend himself. There could be a reason. That is why I'm saying there could be causes of indiscipline. 
and you need to hear this person. Now. There are some confessions that people will make. You yourself will be weak, right? So why I'm saying this is that every school should have their rules and regulations, and rules and regulations, and it should be handed over to the students, to the learners. Let them know that if I get to this point, this is what I'm going to get. And let the parents also, or the sponsors, let them know that this is their stand. This is what this child is supposed to do. And this is what this person is not supposed to do. I want you to know that, do you know that many people in the higher institution now, they don't know that the attendant register they sign while they attend a course in that school school, attend 75%, you know, they have, they're supposed to have 75% attendant before they could be allowed to write exams. Many of them don't know. But this thing is supposed to be in the schools and regulation. And that is why you see some people today, you don't know how many, whether you attended uh, lectures or not. When you come, when somebody comes and tells you, oh, your script is missing, you can't fight it. You cannot. Because if you are not sure that your attendance is up to 75%, you are not even qualified to write the exam. So where will you even start to come and argue? Don't you think the school should, the, the school authorities? So they be... produce some schools. They produce the rules and regulations. Some they don't produce, and they don't make even they don't even make it compulsory for them to. They they, they prefer school fees than the rules and regulations that is going to guide the operation. Sure. There. Right. So before you pay school fees, I think the rules and regulations should be handed over to you first. If you are comfortable with it, you can continue to pay your fees, and we know it's dependent on you. If the... you are not comfortable with it, you are you are free to leave. Okay, does the school make sure do they enforce this now let, let's say for example some of the schools now give the rules and regulation to the students that are coming in do they take their time to enforce it because if they do i think some of the things will be curtailed everybody is playing safe okay sort of because there are things that students will know they know their rights and they know the extent they can go you understand there are things also if they didn't out of ignorance people also Laid down on their rights. So, because of that, the school authority will tell you you are, you are going to go through orientation, and you know they have already announced it, publish it. Go. It's in that orientation process, that one week orientation program, that some of these things they are being shared. And if you are not a uh, part of it, you might not get the knowledge of what is going. To be. Many people are going to speak on what they are going to face on campus. Let me tell, for instance, in the university, they are going to tell a lot. And the other things they share, if you go home and study them, it's going to help you on how you're going to operate in that environment. But because some people, it doesn't matter, even matriculation, it doesn't matter, nobody will care to know. At the end of the day, you see that those things you think that doesn't matter, they won't matter a lot. All right, so let's look at, uh, as we begin to wrap up our discussion, uh, looking at what's the key role correctional facilities, uh, organizations, agencies can play so that when the students are educated, they should have somewhere they can go to help them, you know, go through uh, the correction of uh, issues that has led to them being expelled. If you don't know the cause of a problem, you cannot know the solution. So if you study and find out why that, that is why I'm saying fair hearing will help you. Okay. To know why this child or this person is behaving like this. Fair hearing is very, very important. So if you, if you have heard from that person, you will not know her. This, and before you get to this point, you know, is there, there must be a recurring uh, indisciplinary act that a person may have been involved in. You understand? It must be a recurring thing. Not just once it happens, once you start taking action. No, no. There must be a sign or there must be a proof that this person has been doing this over and over and we have done so and so thing, we have suspended him, we have done this. We have done that by, by giving him manual level, we have detained him, and at the end of the day, the person continued. That is why you can ask, so let's consider this. But you cannot do it on your own, too. You must involve the government that put you there. The body that put you there, if it's private school, the board of governors or whatever, any good that. So, talking about correcting So, now, it, correcting it now is that this, this uh, indiscipline uh, indis uh, indis uh, in this person, yeah. what is the cause of it? Is it from the curriculum? Is it too much? Because most of the time when you see academic weaknesses, it's maybe the person cannot, the head cannot carry what is available there. Yeah. They will tell you you study eight courses or nine, so we won't put... Like when I was in foundation department, they said 13. And when, when you ask them, they say it's a combined degree. You want to do BSc and the head together in foundation, they will say, okay, this is those that are doing peer directly, this is their 
You understand? If you want to stay, you stay. If you don't want to stay, you go to another place. You now look at it. If this thing, if this academic uh, program is too big for the person, maybe the person has to change to another course yeah. that you can attend. Then let me say that is uh, the curriculum now that is uh, involved. Is it a personal problem? What is responsible? Is this person having an issue, or the environment where the person comes from? Is it that there is violence there always? And this person have already inculcated it and can always uh, be violent or smoke and drink and all those, all those things. You now look at it, okay, come. You, ha you have to leave this place. You are in such and so place now. If the person says, oh, if the person goes back to that place, sometimes it will get worse. And if it's academic, something you couldn't measure up, you can go and study. And meet up. So, would you say it should be the responsibility of the school to get this? To know why yes, this to, person to is behaving like this. So that you know the area you are going to help the person. Okay, uh, final question. Uh, uh, did you, before we wrap up, do you think that our Nigeria Teacher Registration really want to go through that stress? And again, while you were mentioning um, possible reasons, I, I realized that you didn't mention spiritual reasons. <laughs> That's, it could be spiritual, you never could tell. Well, it could be spiritual, but uh, for now, it has not been proven. <laughs> okay, that is our own uh, thinking that yes, yes, there could be. Well, we cannot rule that out. But before you talk of spiritual, you have to make sure that all the physical things that you can see, all the normal phenomena that you have tested them and you have seen that they are not there, before you now start thinking spiritual. Is it a lecture that you want to go and find out whether it's a spiritual <laughs> or not? There are a lot to that. Okay. All right, the final question would be uh, do you think the education sector? Should be they should declare a state of emergency in the education sector, just like the Senate has declared in the health sector. Uh, regarding uh, education, everything in the, in the entire education sector, the challenges we're facing, the endless strikes, the facilities not being there as to students, uh, they say need to call uh, for first and foremost. If there's anything they want to do, they should make legal aspect of education a must pass. So should they call a For you to be a teacher or a lecturer. Okay. For you to have any certificate in education. Okay. Lego aspect of education should be one of the core courses that every educationist must have. But that is going to guide you in your operation and then you at any level. So should they that be called for education. for a state of emergency in the education sector? Ensuring that or instituting that Lego aspect of education should be made a compulsory course for the award of any degree or any professional distance in education. That is my point. All right, thank you so much uh, for talking with us on investigation in tertiary institution. Any alternatives? And um, I must say that uh, it has been a super amazing time. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you.